Hello and welcome to the Long Island Weather Update. Yeah, it was a pretty crappy day today. Clouds and then rain moved in in the afternoon and kind of lingered throughout this evening. And uh, we still got some rain lingering across the island and perhaps some sucky drizzle around too as well. Um, just crappy, crappy, crappy day across the area. Chilly, raw, just... Uh, I didn't even make it out all at all today. Today it was just the kind of day you just don't want to be outside. You can see uh, plenty of clouds around uh, across the area. You can see these thicker, whiter clouds are where the steadier, heavier rain was for today. Uh, looking at the current radar at the National Weather Service site, you'll see again got rain still over Suffolk and still some showers over Nassau County. I meant the northern, northeastern New Jersey. Uh, so this is all in relation to. Looking at the weather map, you can see this system that we've got going on here. Stall front syndrome, got the high over New England, a warm front that's going to make its way over us. We're going to be in the warm sector tomorrow. And then behind it, this cold front, which is going to wind up stalling to the south. If we take a look and take a look at our thing, you'll see there's that front, and then it gets hung up to the south and keeps us in the rain chances pretty much for uh, this is Tuesday and Wednesday. And just uh, we're going to be dealing with a lot of rain chances this week. And just the kind of weather I absolutely can't stand. So um, let's get to it. Let's look at our current conditions outside right now. And uh, the rest of the country, no, not really showing any severe weather right now. Uh, we do have some wind advisories and uh, high wind warnings in effect. Uh, high wind watch is in effect for some areas of the west. Red flag warning in, a, in effect for much of New Mexico. Um, and one lone flood warning, flash flood warning in effect for Pennsylvania. Um but other than that, just gloomy, a gloomy day across the area today. Uh, looking at our current conditions at Islip, you can see it's 52 degrees. It's damp, 52, 2.52. Air is saturated with light rain and mist. Uh, and uh, looking at what the day was like, it's pretty much what we're dealing with all day today. Uh, we'll show you observations here from Islip. And you can see the rain, the drizzle actually started. I guess we had a little light rain in the early afternoon. Otherwise, we're just cloudy, and then uh, the rain started around 2 o'clock, 2.30, and lingered around for most of the day. Light, just mainly on the light rain, light side, nothing heavy, but just enough to make it miserable out there. Cold and a raw breeze from the southeast to uh, go along with that, so really just a, not a nice day at all. Uh, pretty crappy day. Uh, so let's look at our highs across the area, and obviously pretty chilly all across the area, low 50s. Over Long Island to so maybe mid 50s in Jersey, but other than that, well below normal. The temperatures lows didn't really go much of anywhere either because the cloud covers so they were in the upper 40s last night. Um, so not much of a diurnal range at all as far as rainfall goes. We'll take a look at the last 24 hours, and not a whole lot of rain, even though it rained. It was mainly of the light variety, so well under a quarter of an inch from most areas. Though a few areas in Nassau got a little more. The heavier rain was in Nassau County because it got. A little more over a quarter of an inch, just around a quarter of an inch in the city. And uh, there's only points around the city. Uh, other than that, um, not a whole lot of rain, just enough to make it a miserable, miserable evening out there. Um, so let's look at our uh, air temperatures and we'll kind of show you where the warm front is here. This might, may or may not, yeah, it sort of shows where it is. You can see the warmer air over here. We can go look at the high temperatures. I guess that would be kind of fair to show you where the warm front is. And you can see the warmer air that is over um, much of the eastern part of the country here. Um, and that is a warm front that will be moving in our direction. Uh, and that's what's the cause of the rain. And we're going to be in that warm air tomorrow. You know, it's going to be not quite that warm, but it's gonna, you're going to feel the humidity for tomorrow for sure. Um, so first, for what we're going to talk about before we talk about the short range Let's get into the long range here. Well, let's first look at the Storm Prediction Center. Uh, marginal risk, just a slight marginal risk, but things do pick up tomorrow, and you'll see by tomorrow we have the moderate risk again, Oklahoma, traditional Tornado Alley, Oklahoma, Kansas area, um, having uh, the risk for severe weather for tomorrow. Um, let's look at the models next. So let's go over here and look at our jet stream patterns. This is the GFS, and you'll see why. We're, everything's all screwed up. You know, Look, look what we have again. Another damn fire hose again. You can see it right there. Right there. So we have that fire hose. And that's bringing in the moisture. Um, and you can see the jet stream's just extremely disorganized this week. Uh, it's, it's very, it's all knotted up and loose. This is just a mess right here on the GFS. And this means 
And one thing you'll notice is that we're going to have a parade of low-pressure systems that are going to be going over us according to the GFS. Now, the Euro is not quite as bad on this. Uh, we'll take a look at both of these. Um, but you'll see the jet stream is very, very, very just messed up. Um, and that is going to result in, uh, you know, crappy weather for the most part. I mean, we're not really going to get any of that nice dry air uh, from the north at all with this uh, type of setup. Uh, but at the same time, because of the cloud cover, right, there you don't really see a big, bi you don't see a big ridge in the east either, which means there's going to be a lot of rain chances and clouds as well in this forecast. Um, let's go now to the European. Now, the AI does not do the upper air uh, up the jet streams. Um, so I'll just have to go to the regular European model and we'll look at the 12Z run. This is the 12Z run, okay. Um, so you can see the fire hose jet and really it kind of shows a similar story here. That's the GFS though. It does show a little, it does show this jet stream diving a little more over the weekend, which would help us keep us drier at least. Um, this is the European uh, out, um, outlook on this. So let's go to the 500 upper air. Uh, now that we looked at the jet stream, and uh, this is again, the, let me go to the AI. The AI does have this output. Um, so you see the, again, you don't see, really see a big ridge, and you see troughs off to the west, and here's that storm for Friday and Saturday. This could keep the weekend very unsettled. Um, you can see that troughing there, and um, that could keep the weekend unsettled without any high pressure there to keep You'll notice there isn't really a big ridge in the east, so it's just kind of just got this troughing going on in the east uh, that's kind of just persistent a little bit, but it's 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 more of like a cutoff type of deal. So um, you don't have the the kind of you see the troughing over Greenland, so there, it means there is no ridging to push down and to, to create the dry air that we need to have sunshine. Let's now go to the GFS. Um. Look at this. Let's see if this looks any different. And it does. See the 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 position of the trough on the GFS is further west, and that could tend to keep us in a wetter flow uh, for the weekend. So you could see that, but you don't really see any big ridging in the east. So um, that's what I'm saying is when you look at this type of setup, you know you're not going to really have uh, any really good dry periods um, on both models. Doesn't look like it anyway. Um, so let's now go and take this down to the conus level. Um, and we'll go to the surface. So when you come to look at the surface map, you'll see we have this 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 front that's gonna kind of got a warm front that comes through, then a cold front. But the front's gonna stall to the south, so you know, we're going to be just on the border of the clouds and the showers, and then to the north, there'll be more sun on Tuesday. Um, and then we have another low press system here for Wednesday, and then here we go, Thursday. Here comes the parade starting Thursday. There's Thursday. There may be a little break on Friday, but still keeping showers around. Then a soaker for possible for Saturday, and then another rain. I mean, this is just constant. And another one going into Wednesday. Uh, I, I mean, this is ridiculous. I mean... This is in the long range, right? Let me just keep, let me get this clear. But this, if we wind up getting all these storms, it's we're gonna have a very very wet May, all right? Um, which I'm tired of all this rain already. <sighs> Sick of it. I'm ready to just hop on a plane and go to Flagstaff. I, I really am. I've had it. Uh, let's go to the European model now. Actually, the AI. We'll look at the we'll look at the operational and then we'll look at the AI. All right, um, so you can see for Monday, still keeping some showers around. And then Tuesday, we're sort of, um, we'll be fine, but if you're in the southern part of Jersey, you might have to deal with some rain chances. And then Wednesday, here we go, more rain chances again for Wednesday. Maybe Thursday, get a break, and then more rain for, thir uh, well, actually part of Thursday, and then it moves in the evening. And look at this, we're going to have rain Friday. And look at that, lingers around at the part of Saturday. The Euro gives us a break on Saturday. That's the difference between the Euro and the GFS. All right, so we have this difference, and that this also shows in the AI as well. So the trough, the trough placement is different on these models. You can see that right there. The trough placement is a little different, a little different, but it doesn't mean doesn't mean great sunny weather at all. All right. Good news is is 
this is a big difference between the AIR. The AIR has nice weather for uh, the middle, uh, has some nicer weather. But this is a ways out. Anything that far out, May 15th, which is 10 days out, uh, is, you know, there's a lot of uncertainty to it that far out. Uh, we can look at the icon model as well. But I think you see the similar source. That high just can't build down because the jet stream is all messed up. It's trying to. Um, and then, yeah, we got just more rain chances again. Thursday, Friday. I, I'm just sick of the rain already. Rain is a four-letter word to me now. It really is. I absolutely I hate it. So um, now we're going to look at the total accumulate precipitation that these models are bringing um, out through the periods. All right. So this is the icon. All right. The icon doesn't look so bad. The Euro AI doesn't look so bad. Well, let's go with the Euro AI all the way out. Doesn't look so bad, or it doesn't have us in the purple. Um, and the Euro operational. Um, let's go to the 12Z European. Doesn't look terrible. All right, but when we go to the GFS, the GFS really just soaks us this month. Right, between now and the middle of the month, how do you like three to four inches of rain? All right. So that's what the GFS is saying. I'm hoping the GFS is wrong with all those systems that it's putting up. Um, let's go to the Canadian, which I don't normally do, but let's do that. Canadian also not showing all that uh, rain either. So it's mainly the GFS. And let's, let's hope the GFS is wrong because I'm going to go crazy if the if that GFS is right. I mean, you might just see me go to Flagstaff. I've, I've just about had it. Uh, I know it's going to cost me money and whatever. I'm going to have to figure that out later. <laughs> i got to get away from all this rain first. Um, so anyway, um, now that you've looked at all that, we're going to go look at the, um, the temperature anomalies, temperature anomaly charts. All right. So this is the GFS and you can see a little bit above normal tomorrow. Not a lot. The only one is going to mainly be the humidity. Tuesday will be above normal. And then Wednesday, you can see kind of on the border there. It does have above normal temperatures. You see where the below normal is out west. But then we get into some below normal temperatures with that rain on Thursday. Friday, it's going to be like a miserable type of deal. Well below normal Saturday with that deep trough. So um, your GFS doesn't really have any big warm-ups for us in store. Um, and if we look at the European, and I will go against the 12Z European. The European is warmer than the GFS. You'll notice that right off the bat. It does get a little cooler as you get to a Friday. It does have those below normal temp anomalies for Friday, but not quite as crazy for the weekend because of the way the trough is set up. So we still have some uncertainty when it comes to this upcoming weekend. Um, but just be advised, it could be pretty crappy if the GFS is right anyway. Um... So the other thing that we're going to have to deal with is humidity, and I will actually show the dew points on this map so you get an idea of what we're going to be dealing with. So um, you can see we're going to be dealing with that humidity Monday, and you can see we get a little break from a Tuesday, and then it comes back Wednesday, um, and then kind of gets pushed off. You can see this kind of shows the reflections of the storm. So we don't really have crazy levels of humidity here, but we're going to be on the boundaries at least this is what the, GF, the GFS is showing here. Meanwhile, you're out west, boy. Flagstaff, two points in the 20s and 30s. That's my kind of place right there. Enough of this rain and humidity. Um, so let's look at the... Um, uh, what, what was I going to do here? Oh, that's right. I was going to look at the other thing. The 700... Th it's in here. It's in here. Where is it? 700 to 300. All right. So this kind of shows you the kind of moisture that the GFS is thinking is going to come our way. All right. So you can see this is the moisture with this system here. Then more moisture comes in. Yeah, there could be more chances of rain oh, tomorrow night. To t and then dry air comes in for Tuesday. And Wednesday we see some drying. You can see there's a lot of these systems. There's another one. That, that one looks like a very powerful storm um, for the weekend. And then another one. So it has these two pretty big storms. The GFS has. It's only the GFS that has them, so I'm hoping that it's just something with the GFS and not not something that's going to be, um, you know, reflecting on the other models. Because if we do get all these storms, we could wind up getting a lot of rain. And the ground is still saturated from all the rain we had back in March and part of April. So it's like the water tables are very, very high. We don't need any more rain right now, right? 
We need a break from the rain, but unfortunately, it doesn't seem like that's what's going to be happening. So, um, it's a little early, so I don't really have time. I, I realized I started this weather update kind of early. Um, with the HRRR, I didn't... Um, each triple R is probably not in yet. I can uh, go to the late. You can go to the uh, latest here and see. Yeah, uh, we only have 31 frames of the H triple R in, um, which I guess will get us through most of tomorrow. So uh, let's do that, um, and you'll see here that you'll have actually. Before I do that, we'll go ahead and look at the NAM model. All right, we'll look at that high resolution NAM model uh, out to the three kilometer to show you what can happen. So the NAM actually was a little underdone with the precipitation. But anyway, as tomorrow, you'll see a few more showers pop up in the morning. And then there's another complex of showers that kind of brushes us by in the uh, noon hours. Uh, and then with the humid air in place, there could always be the chance of another shower. It's not as there's another possible chance, again, as you get into the later in the later in the day tomorrow. And then this kind of gets pushed off to the south a little bit on Tuesday. Just a little bit, though. If you're in Jersey, you're still going to be dealing with it. All right. Um, and then um, as far as you're getting this, as far as this goes, it's take us out to Wednesday. All right. Uh, but you'll still see that there are some rain chances in here. Uh, and, uh, you know, it's a very, a very crappy situation. The more stall front syndrome again. You have a cold front, it should move through. But instead, it just gets stuck because we have no jet stream. So, yeah, we have no jet stream. Let that sink in for a moment. I mean, I can't call it a jet stream, not a, f a functional one, because the fronts keep stalling out. That's not normal. Um, so we're going to go to the GFS, and we'll look at the uh, air masses, and, and then I'll go to the HRRR. I know the GFS is kind of a lower low resolution model, but let's go ahead and look at that. So you'll see that humid air come in tomorrow. Two points. How about two points in the 60s? Yeah, tomorrow's going to be pretty humid, especially if you're in Jersey. Uh, it's going to be a pretty muggy day. Yeah, I know it's only May, but this is the way it is now. Uh, and then you see this dry air trying to push into the area on Tuesday. So we get a little relief, mainly north, uh, mainly over the city, into the, uh, uh, you know, and north, especially north. If you're upstate, northern New England, you're going to have a very nice day. But for us, we're going to be on the border of that humid air. That will mean more clouds, and so it won't be completely clear. Um, and then that humid air kind of surges back in on Wednesday. Uh, the southwest wind, you can see. Uh, now, it is a southwest wind, so I think there will be a sea breeze, so we'll keep the south shore cooler, and Jersey will probably be a lot hotter. It'll depend on you know, how much sun you get. And then Wednesday, you see that humidity kind of coming back into the picture, and then you see that front just stalled. It's just stalled out. Here we are again, sitting right over us. You see the humid air off the south, the dry air off to the north. Thursday and Friday, we get another little push of some drier air coming in from the east, but you know, you're going to be dealing with uh, stall front syndrome, so forget any sunshine. There's that storm for Saturday, um, and then that moves out, and then you're still not getting rid of the humidity. Maybe Monday we get, we'll start to try to get rid of it a little bit. Um, and this is going way out there now, all right? We have to wait. I mean, we're still not getting rid of the humidity. So although it won't be ridiculously warm because of the cloud cover, we are going to have a lot of humidity. Um, so temperatures. I'll start with this. So you'll see tomorrow will definitely be warmer than today. Uh, temperatures probably get close to 70 degrees. Probably 70s in New Jersey. That's why I prefer looking at the higher end. Not dropping back much at night because the cloud cover, even warmer on Tuesday, will be well into the mid to upper 70s. Um, upstate, it'll be cooler, obviously. Probably close to 70. Um, 70, um, yeah, so it'll be cooler upstate, obviously. Northern New England. And then the heat kind of comes back. But you'll see we got a stalled front, so you'll see what's going on here. The warm front sitting right over us for Wednesday. Uh, over Jersey, you're baking in the 80s, but if you're in Suffolk, you're probably only around 60. We'll probably be, have 70s in Nassau County. Um, and then as we get into it, Thursday, that front kind of sits sinks a little further to the south again uh, and then sinks further to the south on Friday. Um, plenty of cloud cover, obviously, all these days. Saturday. Saturday will be cool and raw with all that rain around. And then uh, we warm up briefly on Sunday. And then it's just really, you know, you want to have some nice weather to get outside. Uh, I, I can't. Uh, the only day I can sort of say is going to be all right is Tuesday. That's it. That's the only only one day you've got. The rest of the days kind of kind of suck. So now that we looked at all this, so let's go and look at the sky cover. And Well, let's go back to the HRRR now. We have a little more of it in. 
31 hours of it in. I guess that'll be enough to kind of... I started this weather update too early. I just wanted to get it over with because it's just really crappy. So you can see the showers. Um, the HRRR is a little different than the NAM. It's giving us less... Uh, you're seeing less rain here, so uh, which is good. So it might actually, the HRRR, if the HRRR is correct, you won't have to deal with any rain at all tomorrow until a chance of a shower or a thunderstorm perhaps in the early evening. And then for, uh, now we don't have enough to show you Tuesday, so that's the thing. But I guess I can always show it to you tomorrow night. Oh, we got another one just came in. Another fr another hour just came in. So another little couple of frames came in here. Um, so this is as far as we got. I'm going to have out till Tuesday, though. So that's that's going to be it. Um, but as far as tomorrow goes, it will be quite humid. So let's look at the dew points, and you'll see what I mean. So here's the weather for tomorrow, and uh, you'll see that humidity. We have this actually we start off with actually the wind goes a little westerly there, so it could heat up quite a bit actually if we got that westerly wind. Um, it could heat up. It could heat up well in the 70s, even on Long Island. And then the winds turn south by the afternoon. But you can see these are dew points, and the dew points are in the mid to upper 60s. This is really humid for uh, this type of time of year. It's absolutely ridiculous. But you'll see that push of drier air making its way in as we get toward Tuesday. So we, this is the drier air that's going to be coming in and bringing better weather for Tuesday. All right. Um, Cloud cover. Uh, let's look at that. Obviously, I could take a sounding. Let's see what this says here. But I think we'll have a pretty, yeah, pretty saturated air mass all the way through. Yeah. Meanwhile, if you're in Canada, oh, look at that. Much better there. Much better. You know, much better there, at least the further away from the, the stall front. So they're going to get the clear out, you know, for tomorrow. Um, Let's now look at some sky cover um, maps. So for tomorrow, you see we're stuck in the clouds. Tuesday, see it tries to clear us out a little bit, especially north of the city. You're going to have a beautiful day. Albany, maybe I should go to Albany. I'm not, I'm not kidding. I might just go to Albany. Maybe I could do that in a day. Um, and then... Um, and then um, more clouds coming for Wednesday, and then that's it. We're kind of stuck in the clouds. Here we are Wednesday, showing a lot of clouds. Thursday, a lot of clouds. Friday, a lot of clouds. Saturday, Sunday. Maybe Sunday we get a little bit of clearing, maybe, before more clouds come in. But you can see plenty of clouds on this, on this outlook here. Uh, let's go to the RGM next. So this is the RGM, the high resolution now. You can see plenty of clouds for tomorrow. Um, and then Tuesday... We choose, the R gem is actually pretty encouraging. It does clear Long Island out, actually, um, decently. So maybe we have a decent day on Tuesday. That's our best shot of decent weather because the clouds do come back in on Wednesday. And then you can see kind of them getting kind of getting pushed away from uh, as we get to it later in the day on Wednesday, hanging on along the coast, which uh, with a little bit of fog perhaps. Um, kind of curious as the temperatures here. So they don't use this model for temperatures. But you can see, yeah, much warmer over Jersey where the sun is. And then Long Island will be cooler. It's almost like a little backdoor front setting up right here, perhaps. Uh, but it will be humid. This will be humid air over here, I think. So, uh, you know, it might be 80, but it's going to be a humid 80. Not going to be not going to be fun. Not going to be fun at all. Um, going to be very humid. So, all right. So we looked at all that now. Um, let's go over to Ventu Sky. We can visualize things a little more here. We'll use Ventu Sky. Yeah, I was looking on. If I sound a little tired and just down, it's just, I've been in all day. It's, this weather is not good for me at all. It's very bad for me. I've had my fill of it. Um, so let's move this over to Wednesday. We can see the difference here. So this kind of shows you we will have a south wind. You can see Jersey is going to bake 83, 80 degrees, but Long Island will be cooler. Um, and this is the I output from the Icon model here that we're looking at. Um, uh, but it will be humid. Let's see what the dew points are. Yeah, oh, my God, 67. These are dew points. This is like August dew points. It's only May. I mean, this is not normal. I'm sick of this humidity telling you it's just you know if i could if i could what i would do 
is from like April to September or April to October, I'd be in Flagstaff for that part of the year and then come back here in the winter. The humidity here is just unbelievable. It really, really is. So we're going to be dealing with a lot of humidity, and then I'll visualize tomorrow too as well. It's going to be pretty humid tomorrow too. So get ready to do a lot of sweating, you know. Um, thunderstorm threats for tomorrow. Um, it is showing some cape. So there is some cape because we do have that humidity in the air. So um, there is the chance of a thunderstorm. Well, I don't think anything will be severe. And you never know. One could be strong. You never know because lately it seems like the thunderstorms that we do get always wind up being s stronger than forecast. Because, again, we have a warmer, more humid atmosphere because of climate change than the models are used to. So that's that's why we have a tendency to overperform. And so just be advised, we may wind up overperforming again. All right, so now we've gone over all that. Let's look at the Climate Prediction Center, which doesn't look so bad when you look at this because it only has, or it does have above normal in the 6 to 10 day northeast. Not excellent, not a very high chance of above normal, but it does have a decent chance of above normal temperatures. Uh, but the temperature, uh, I meant precipitation, the temperatures uh, below normal in the southeast and below normal generally east and, and above normal in the northwest. And then we go to the 8 to 14 day, and you'll see they have the below normal continuing and near normal for the northeast, below normal in the southeast, which again indicates troughing in the east and slight chances of above normal precipitation. Um, we can go to the Weather Prediction Center also, and let's look at uh, QPF here. This will show us the rainfall day 1 to 7. All right, so we look at the next seven days. We're in the blue, which means we would get around one and a half inches of rain out of this. All right, that's not terrible. It's not terrible. Um, it's not as bad as with the GFS. So they don't seem to think that the GFS is correct, at least. Hopefully it's not. Uh, and excessive rain. There's only one area where there's marginal risk of an excessive rain. Uh, let's see, day two, day three, day four, day five. None of it's over our area. It's more off to the southeast. Um, so uh, let's let's go to the ice. We haven't spoken about this. The ice, Arctic Sea ice, and now Arctic Sea ice, waking walking on sunshine. So following the 2024 maximum sea ice extent on March 14th. Arctic sea ice has declined slowly such that 2024 March average is, is the 15th lowest in the passive microwave satellite record. So we're not breaking any records here, basically, on minimum sea ice. But we are scraping in the bottom. Um, it's still pretty low. Um, and this is uh, another chart here that we'll show you here, actually. This isn't, this isn't too bad, but this is because, again, the jet streams actually trap most of the cold air up there, so... It actually means that it's colder up there than it might not might be otherwise. Um, and this is the map, so you see the map here. So decent amount of sea ice still left. So if you want to go and escape this crap, you can either go to Flagstaff, or if you want it cold, you can go up to northern Canada um, to escape this crap. But uh, Oh, let's see. I think that takes that talks about pretty much everything that I was supposed to talk about today. I think I'm trying to remember. Uh, we'll look at the satellite. See, we can look at the satellite view for the whole country. It kind of shows you what we got going on here. You can see just a lot going on here. A lot of is another big storm over here in the northwest. Um, and you got a lot of clouds in the whole northeast here. You see that? Well, those clouds. So a lot of clouds. Um, that we're going to ha have. But again, we will get a break on Tuesday. But, um, you know, if you look at the forecast from the National Weather Service, you see the deal that, uh, if we could just click on it here. Yeah, rain chances every single day except for Tuesday. Every day there's a chance of rain. Uh, it's unbelievable. Right through the weekend. So, and then we have the drizzle tonight. So we still got to have drizzle just because the rain has stopped. Doesn't mean the drizzle is done with. So, I guess we can look at windy.com and take a look at our visibility and see uh, see uh, how much drizzle we're going to get here. And let's see. Visibility. Because this shows where you could have drizzle, all right? So it is showing drizzle to start the morning tomorrow. And look at that. still showing perhaps some drizzle on the south shore and even trying to bring some up. 
I don't know if that's rain or drizzle. Let me look at that for a minute. This is the European model. Yeah, it's drizzle. So be prepared. Or it could be fog. Yeah, it could be fog and drizzle, perhaps. So be advised that with that humidity tomorrow, we may be dealing with uh, some sucky drizzle around, too, as well. So tomorrow, not going to be a great day, either. Um, Tuesday's really your only dry day if you have plans outside. That's your only day you're really going to be able to do something, because every other day it looks pretty crappy. Uh, just If you want to spend time outside, well, well, let me put up the forecast for Flagstaff. It's sunny every single day. Look at that. Sunny, 61. Sunny, 66 on Tuesday. Sunny, 65. Thursday, sunny, 65. Friday, sunny, 68. I'm about ready just to go to Flagstaff and screw this. I really am. If I go to Flagstaff, I'll let you know. There won't be any weather updates. I'll be away completely, all right? So um, well, I've had it with this. I really have. So that's all. Thanks for watching.